Hi there, welcome back to the Spirit of Wisdom and Revelation channel. This is just a short video that Father impressed upon my heart that I need to make, uh, a warning that I need to, uh, to sound the alarm of. And um, basically how it happened, I was just going through um, my book where I write all the words that Father gives to me. Um, I write it all in one book and I, I, just, I was looking for something else and I happened to see this particular word that he gave, I think it's in August last year, and um, and I wrote right at the bottom of it, I wrote there, the dreams of the dogs. Now, the dreams of the of the dogs is what I discussed in the previous devotional called Two Johns and a Jezebel. So when I saw that, I knew that he was alerting me to, um, to uh, just sound the alarm and um, to give you this particular word, which I will give at the end of this video. Um, but as I read it as well, he reminded me of a dream, actually two dreams that I had that I also want to relay in this video um, and just give a short interpretation of it as well. So, you know, with regards to warnings at this moment, I think that we are inundated with so many warnings with regards to wolves. Um, and it truly is the, the time and the age of the wolves that are coming out and we see persecution starting to flare up and it will increase most definitely. And I think it will, the increase will um, definitely happen amongst ministry, those who are in ministry and that Father is using authentically, those in true ministry. Um, and um, we should expect that and we should um, heed this warning and, and consider what it is that he's saying to us at this time as well. So I'm most definitely applying all of this to myself. And you know, watchmen give a warning before the time. They don't give a warning when the wolf is actually at the door trying to blow the house down. Uh, it's They see the wolf coming. And so we've had these warnings now for years. But as interesting is the, the, the urgency um, and the frequency or how often it is actually mentioned now. So we need to take note of that and really say, Father, we have to have a certain disposition concerning these warnings. We can't just uh, uh, hear these warnings or watch when somebody talk about it um, and just go on with our normal day as if we didn't hear it, as if the wolf is not approaching, or the wolves, wolf or wolves. So, you know, we need to uh, spend so much more intimate time with him in his presence because that is the only safe place the only safe place is under his wing and in obedience to him that's the safe place and that's the place we need to seek even more now in this time so what happened to me this is probably about a few i'd say august last year as well um i was cleaning house and all of a sudden the chorus of a Bad Moon Rising song started, uh, you know, I started singing it or it came up in my heart. And I was thinking, what the heck am I singing? It's not something I would ever listen to. And when I ever heard it, you know, it was probably in, like an ad or some music playing somewhere, but not something I listened to myself personally. So I, I didn't really know all the words, just the chorus part. So this came up in my, in my spirit and I thought to um, look at the lyrics of the song. And so I just want to read this, these lyrics because it's very applicable and it's even a warning from the enemy to tell us what's going on. So let me just start there with the lyrics. It starts with, I see the bad moon arising. I see trouble on the way. I see earthquakes and lightning. I see bad times today. Don't go around tonight while well, it's bound to take your life. There's a bad moon on the rise. I hear hurricanes are blowing. I know the end is coming soon. I fear rivers overflowing. I hear the voice of rage and ruin. Don't go around tonight while well, it's bound to take your life. There's a bad moon on the rise tonight. All right. Hope you got your things together. Hope you're quite prepared to die. Looks like we're in for nasty weather. One eye is taken for an eye. Well, don't go around tonight while well, it's bound to take your life. There's a bad moon on the rise. Don't come around tonight while well, it's bound to take your life. There's a bad moon on the rise. 
So now on to my uh, dream that I had um, last year. Now I called the dream a bad moon rising. So what happened was I had an aerial view in my dream of a stage, much like we would have with America's Got Talent uh, stage, very huge stage with a lot of people around it and just glamour and lights and the whole works. And I had an aerial view and I started to uh, focus in on the stage. And what I saw on the stage was the backdrop and the backdrop was a full moon, a bright full moon. And in front of this full moon was a clock and the clock was Roman numerals. That was the backdrop. The act itself was shadow hands. So you, I could see black hands that was actually shadows and this was the act and that's the end of the dream so the interpretation of the dream is as follows we know that in genesis 1 um, the lord god uh, told us that the sun the moon and the stars are a sign unto us so it tells us what um, age we are in it tells us what time it is it um, we have the constellations that are telling a story so the sun and the moon and the stars they serve as a sign so here we have the moon and the moon is full right the fact that the the moon is full is telling us that a time of fullness had come a time of maturity has come so we have this stage that is set with a moon that is full now shakespeare is the one that said all the world's a stage and that's the first words that came to me when i had this dream all the world's a stage everybody's just looking at the stage nobody's looking at the backdrop everybody's looking at the act the shadow hands so the Shakespeare that said all the world's a stage I actually went to look up the full quote and it's so applicable to what father is showing us and I'm just going to read the full quote he says all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players they have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts his acts being seven ages I think the the phases that a moon go through is also called ages. So the question is, now that we know that the time is full, the fullness of time has come with the full moon. The question is, what time is it? The Roman numerals are telling us what time it is. It's telling us it's the Roman age. So immediately when you think of the Roman age, you think of Nero. And Nero is the type and shadow of the Antichrist right um, he persecuted the saints terribly and the interesting part that father drew my attention to was Adolf Hitler and he was fascinated with Nero to the point where he um, when uh, at the end of World War II he made a decree that is called the Nero decree where he wanted to destroy Germany and every every evidence he could find exactly what Nero did to Rome he burned it down so uh, uh, Adolf Hitler was a very staunch follower of Nero and the interesting part about Adolf Hitler is that his first name is Wolfgang. So you just see the connections that father brought to my attention. So the fullness of time is reaching us of that kind of persecution that will be coming very very soon. And even if we think of um, Adolf Hitler, we immediately think um, World War, right? And even right now, we are hearing the war drums beating louder and louder. And everybody, years, are aware there's a backdrop. But they are fascinated with the shadow hands. And the shadow hands represent the shadow governments. Those who are truly in control and those that are just making sure that everybody's looking at the act and applauding at the act because it's so wonderful. They are aware there's a backdrop, but their focus is the shadow hands, the act that is right before them. Okay, so that is what that uh, um, dream meant. And the interesting part about two nights ago, was it probably three by now, I had a dream where somebody came and told me, you know, 
The mark of the beast is, is, is here already and it's, uh, 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 it's going to be a terrible time. And I then went to my mother and I started telling her, I remember this is in the dream that I said to her, in three months time, they're going to start hunt us down. Now, whether it's actually three months time or not, that's in Father's hands. He knows when he's going to allow these things to happen as prophesied. But the urgency of it was behind it. And this is what I want to get to, is that we've been hearing these things over and over and over, and we've become like the proverbial frog in the, the boiling water that's become a jacuzzi, and we started being, you know, being fried or being uh, 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 warmed up in this lovely little jacuzzi, not realizing that we're going to be eaten alive, so to speak. So um, we need to take note of the urgency of the messages that are coming. And I also just want to talk about another dream that I had, uh, I think it's probably three years ago by now, I'm not sure. Um, it was, I, it started with me sitting in, gray, in a grey overcoat um, and I was sitting in a line with other women on grass and our knees had to touch each other's back, that's how close we had to sit. And there were men sitting next to us, also in a very long line, with exactly the same overalls on, grey overalls, exactly as close to each other as well. And I could see barbed wire all around us, and I knew that I was in a concentration camp. And there was a German sh soldier standing one side, uh, uh, you know, barking out orders. And he called the woman that was right behind me. He called her to come to him, and she couldn't understand what he was saying. And so the next moment, he just promptly marched up to her with his baton and he started hitting this woman over the head. And I, this was one of the most vivid dreams I've ever had. I could feel every blow that hit this woman as her body rocked against mine with every blow. And he bludgeoned her head to a pulp and she died behind me. And that was the end of my dream. So I was quite shaken by this, this dream and it... Uh, took me a few hours to get over it. I actually woke up crying. So obviously I don't have anything against German people. <laughs> what I'm saying is that the German uh, reference is showing us the, the Adolf Hitler and the Roman age uh, reference so that we can understand that if you hear the same things, you can expect the same thing to come. But in this case, it's going to be worldwide. It's not just going to be concentrated on the Jews, but it will be concentrated on all saints. Right? The Antichrist spirit is rising. Okay. So I wanted to just first let us read, before I give the word, I want us to just read first Luke 10. Now Luke 10 is where Yeshua speaks to his disciples. He chooses 70 and they go out two by two. And he gives them instructions. But towards the end of the part that I'm going to read, I want you to note the vengeance that the Lord God will have on those who come against his lambs. So um, just take this into consideration with regards to um, with how the Lord God watches over his flock. Okay, so let's read Luke 10 from verse 1. After these Things the Lord appointed uh, other seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place where the himself would come. So we're reading this prophetically, right? Of what will happen. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. So he's talking about the workers. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers, workers into his harvest. Verse 3, go your ways. Behold, I sent you forth as lambs amongst wolves. So this is the age of the wolves. Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, peace be into this house, to this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they get, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. So he's saying here that he will provide, all the provision will be made. He will ensure that we come to the right place where we will have food and shelter. And at the right time, we can then go wherever he sent us, but not to go from house to house to get this provision or, or food. 
Verse 8. And into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are before you. And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is nigh unto you. But into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the street of the same, and say, Even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be you sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. In other words, you have been warned. And then Yeshua says this, But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, he's saying if this was done, all the wonders and signs that you will see by the apostles that I sent out, that I spoke about in Acts 2.0, if all those signs and wonders have happened in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth in ashes. Remember, once the apostles receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, they will then go to the multitude and tell them to repent, showing great signs and wonders. Okay, so the Lord is saying there will be great judgment and vengeance on these cities that will not heed to the apostles and his workers. Verse 14, But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. So there's a clear warning, clear instructions of what is requiring of us. Just do what I send you out to do. Do not worry about provision. And you, I'm sending you as lambs amongst the wolves. Okay, here's the word that Father gave me in August last year. My precious lambs, know that the hour is dark. Not only do the profane become more profane, but those who are of my fold will grow holier as they abide. As lambs to the slaughter, the slaughter of wolves set to kill, so I send you. Even now the fierceness of the wolves grow more and more, even so my lambs are to become meeker. My wisdom is not of this world, my children. My wisdom is peaceable and bears the fruit of my spirit. Love, joy, Peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, long-suffering and self-control is for your protection and for you to endure to the end. In the darkest hour, these will be your sustenance. But the proudful, the boastful and the contentious will be fed to the wolves. For how can two walk together unless they agree? It is indeed a bad moon rising, a time for the release of the wolves. Will you be as a lamb amongst the wolves? I send you as lambs, meek, gentle, and silent in the face of your accusers, except that which I give you to speak. The hour is darkening, my lambs. The hour is darkening. And I am sorrowful of spirit, for I, who know all things, know also the plans of the enemy. To release his wolves amongst my sheep, to scatter them. My sheep know my voice. Do you know my voice? Are you listening now? Do you hear what the spirit is saying even now? Seek me as never before, for the appointed time has come when my sheep will be scattered even as then. Do not fear, my children, as I've been with those who have gone before me, before you, so I will be with you to watch over you. Ever watching over my flock, I, your hedge of protection, I, your rod and your staff and your chief shepherd, 
Shall I, who am the good shepherd, forsake my sheep in the darkest hour of need? Never. Therefore, do you not know that it is your heart that causes you to stray? Do you not know that all your decisions are made from your innermost being? If I then, in my greatest hour of need, was as a lamb, should you not also be? Do not be as this world, my little ones, but walk as I walked, in meekness and in the fear of God. Amen. The focus here, and what is required of us, is a greater urgency to seek His presence like never before, to come in that place under His wings of Psalm 91, where no arrow will come near us, no sickness, nothing that the enemy had bring against us. The Psalm 27, where is our fortress, where He hides us in the secret of His tabernacle. This is where we have to find ourselves continually. And from out of this place, we minister. But even now, in this hour that is darkening, we are to seek Him even more. Who will listen to this? Who will heed this call? Who will earnestly think, Lord, I see the time. I really think I need to seek your presence even more, the time that we are in. And it's from this place where he cultivates and his virtue, a transaction takes place in his presence, where the fruits of the Spirit are cultivated and grow. And you go out and you can practice it. You know, practice makes perfect. Where your accusers, even those of your own household, or whoever you speak to come against you, and you then have to apply what you've learned in that inner chamber so that you can be made ready for the time to come. Because he's saying, this will be your sustenance. This will help you to endure to the end when you walk by the Spirit and when you abide in me. I truly pray that you hear what the Spirit is saying to his church in this time as you continue to hear the cry of the watchman beware of the wolves thank you for watching this bless you